and welcome back to the Audi RS6 performance, no less. I know it's been forever since we've had uh, this car on the channel, but hopefully I've been filling that void with uh, some uh, uh, enlightening and entertaining car content. However, there's been some questions cropping up over the last few weeks, and I've heard it several times, of discussions amongst petrol heads as to what your perfect daily driver would be. Now, let me preface that question with what the ethos of this channel is all about. And if you're a regular subscriber, you'll know that for me, it's all about smiles per gallon, which means how much fun you can get out of a car. Now, in a daily driver, that by convention might not necessarily be the key components that you're looking for. I guess when you imagine daily driver, you might be thinking practicality first, fuel consumption, etc. But that's why I think this car, for me, and for people that enjoy driving, but still need an element of practicality, this thing ticks so many boxes. But what is it? Why is this car so appealing? And why I say that is, when I put pictures up of it on my Instagram, when I eventually get around to making videos with it, and when I discuss this car with people, they seem to love it. It goes off on comments, the likes on Instagram go crazy. And I know it's brilliant, but it, it's made me wonder, what is it? What are the fundamental components that seem to make people so passionate about this car? My take on this is that it really is two cars in one. And I know we hear this quite often, particularly with sports cars. It's like you can drive it really fast when you want to, and then you can put it in comfort and it's chilled. But this is two cars in one. It shares the platform with the much more practical and fuel efficient Audi A6 Avant. Meaning you can have the mother-in-law in the passenger seat, kids in the back, dog in the boot. But when the dog jumps out, the kids disembark and the mother-in-law is gracefully dropped off at her doorstep. You dial this knob here on the Audi Drive Select, put it into dynamic, and all hell breaks loose. to make this. In a way, the RS6 is so un-Audi. I, 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 I just don't know what they were thinking. They must have stayed late one night in the lab and gone, you know what we need? What we need to do is be able to take the dog to the park really quickly. Oh, 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 oh. Now let me give you some context as to what really quickly means. I owned an Audi R8 V10 Plus up until about, it was maybe about 18 months ago. And that in a straight line, not necessarily around corners, but in a straight line, the pull on this is as fast, if not faster, than an R8 V10 Plus. And I thought to myself, is that right? Or am I just imagining things? Well, of course, a quick Google would yield many a video of this car, uh, not only trashing some cars, but keeping up with supercars. And sure enough, there was a video recently, I think it was by Auto Express, of this car having a drag race with its more supreme supercar cousin, the latest R8 V10. And this thing's head to head with it the whole way. And it doesn't even have launch control. You just you just smash your right foot and it is it is off. Absolute madness. I think one of the main feelings you get from this is the torque. It is like this thick, malleable ooze of power that thrusts you down the road like a tarmac terrorist. It's got something about it that is addictive. And for me, one of the greatest traits of a car that makes you smile is the addiction. Now you wouldn't imagine that 
a car of this platform being the whole five-seater big boot layout you wouldn't imagine it to provide as much fun as it does and this is for me why I keep coming back round to this arguably being the best daily driver and let me asterisk this for petrol heads okay now obviously the fuel consumption is terrible uh, this thing drinks with two straws it's around about two tons and so to project this mass of aluminium and awesomeness down this road at such a pace the engine is obviously it's demanding a lot of juice and so I sort of average about 19 miles per gallon so when I say it's a practical daily I do have to say that it's practical for people that enjoy driving because the offset of that is the performance that you get is savagery so you can dial it down I mean this great there's an Audi drive select system here Audi have uh, pre-programmed three presets you've got comfort auto and dynamic the comfort mode to be honest I, I do leave it in comfort most of the time that's just because I I use this car to crunch miles I'm on the motorway quite a lot but this weird physics bending button does strange things if I skip over to dynamic that as the name would suggests stiffens this car up like a bad case of rigor mortis to the detriment that the ride quality becomes pretty poor but it transforms the whole car so much so that I'm like how I just don't know how it manages to control such mass as I mentioned it's it's basically two tons four-wheel drive the traction's daft and you pop some bangs on the overrun something stupid <laughs> good god so really while this thing has its elements where it really isn't practical you could argue that that makes it the most practical because if you're looking for a car that ticks the performance box and a car that ticks the practicality box it's saving you in a way from having to buy two cars Imagine you're the dad that has to do the school run but doesn't want to spend money on an extra sports car to enjoy on a sunny Sunday afternoon. I can't think of many other cars that would do the job that this thing does. Now let's not ignore other cars, okay? I'm not pretending like there aren't other cars in this space. However, it is an area which has only recently, I feel, began to have some competition. So I was recently at a Mercedes AMG event and I went out in the uh, uh, the E63S 4 Matic and that's where I this is where I say that this car has only recently had some stiff competition because up until lately the E63 estate cars they never had four wheel drive and that for me is a massive selling point for this car I actually derive this strange pleasure in using this in very adverse weather conditions there's something very enjoyable about smashing through the wind and rain knowing that you're fully planted while still being able to use performance like this super cool but this again is where Mercedes and now Porsche are starting to introduce cars which rival this as I mentioned e63 s4 matic I of all places drove that car on track and I was blown away very cool I've never taken this on track but I've been on track following one um, funnily enough while I was in my uh, Porsche GT3 and well needless to say it does not hang around which brings me on to a feature that is specific to this car um, I spec this with the optional carbon ceramic brakes you might yell overkill for a car like this however I'm inclined to a degree to agree this thing weighs a lot though it's it's basically two tons and two tons with 605 horsepower gets going very quickly and you need some serious stopping power to make sure you shed off the speed in most cars on the road you don't necessarily need that but with big weight comes big wear and big fade and believe me you do not want two tons of fade when you get enthusiastic in this thing I've experienced this on an Alpine road trip in my first Audi R8 which had normal steel rotors 
full brake fade, pedal on the floor, fluids boiled, bad day out. Uh, scared the living hell out of me. Now I'm not saying you're gonna drive this car like that all too often, but if like me, you do road trips and you find yourself driving spiritedly on a fantastic road, it's nice to have the confidence that you're not gonna get any fade or, you know, even at the least get any warped discs because they're expensive. Um, second of all, they don't develop any brake dust. So uh, you can keep this nice Merlin purple paint job looking nice and shiny. And second of all, going back to the weight, it's already around two tons. So the weight saving from carbon ceramic brakes reduces that overall mass, but also there's less unsprung mass on the wheels, leading to, I guess, a more free flowing steering feel. Leading on to steering feel, I actually think this is one area where this car actually falls short. Now, as we mentioned, it is a, a daily car, so you're not necessarily looking at this thing, thinking I need to feel every stone and pebble and bump to get the last tenth out of this car. However, there are times where it does feel a little bit hollow. It feels maybe too synthetic, and I would like it to be a little bit heavier. Going back to the uh, Audi Drive Select, earlier on I mentioned that the dynamic mode is, well, stiff. And it is really stiff, but it bends physics. I don't know how it manages to keep this weight in check, but the way you can throw this thing in, into a corner in dynamic is brilliant. However, you might also consider that, well, okay, if you want to use that performance, the trade-off is stiffness. Not so. Audi have an individual mode where you can spin one more button and program your personalized settings to what your ideal scenario is when you're in the RS6. Me personally, I have it in comfort suspension and everything else in dynamic. So I've got faster gear shifts, quicker throttle response, popping and banging from the exhaust on the overrun, but I'm still absorbing all of these, uh, well, notorious traits of our great British B-roads. It's lovely. And this is where it comes back to smiles per gallon. And as inefficient as this thing is, the joy factor is disproportionate. And that, for me, is the number one trait of the RS6. You've got all the practicality of your standard A6 Avant, family friendly, dog in the back, off we go to the park, sir. But then as soon as everyone's left, it's your turn, and by God, is your turn good. <laughs> so there you have it. RS6 fans, please leave your comments below as to uh, what you think of this car as a platform. Always fascinated to know. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.